Hi gang, Rob here. It is 12 April 2013, and tonight I thought I would do sort of a knife school video. <clears throat> maybe for some of you uh, younger guys who are just getting into knives, or maybe some older guys who are just getting into knives and have an interest in how folding knives work. You know, there are... Uh, <clears throat> There are a lot of videos on YouTube, uh, knife guys talking about knives, and you hear things like uh, pivot screws and phosphor bronze washers and uh, adjustable pivots, uh, side play and a knife blade being removed by tightening screws. And I wanted to kind of go over <clears throat> some modern day standard pivot constructions and how they work and why. And the first one that I wanted to talk about tonight tonight would be what I would call a standard pivot. Uh, and that is this rather questionable drawing that we have in front of us. We're going to use as a pointer tonight the Spyderco Superleaf. And what we have <clears throat> are on either side a frame or a, uh, a liner they can be used interchangeably for our purposes and then we have the blade on either side of the pivot and the, this is a, a cross section of the knife right down the center of the pivot <clears throat> generally on one side of the knife we're going to have a, a female pivot which is essentially a socket and then on the other side a pivot screw that goes into the female end of the pivot and this creates a machined pin <clears throat> right through the middle of the knife very closely fit and toleranced to the blade which of course is going to swing around the pivot And then the blade will generally not ride on the frame itself or the, the liner. There's usually going to be a washer. <clears throat> Many of them now are phosphor bronze. Some of them are Teflon. And the way that tension is uh, applied and adjusted on the knife blade is by tightening the pivot screw into the female pivot to a level of tension that gives the user the desired amount of resistance or play in the blade. Now, if you notice these bolded areas are where the washer contacts the blade and the frame. Now this is both a bearing surface and uh, a stop or it is a bearing surface under tension as I've indicated here. The tighter that you tighten the pivot screw the more tension there is and uh, the more friction there will be in that bearing surface. Now some of, some of your less expensive knives you'll notice that if you loosen the pivot screw all the way uh, the blade will just flop around and swing overly freely and have a lot of side play in it. <clears throat> uh, some knives that use this pivot system that are constructed with high quality, it'll almost be home without the pivot screw in it. You know, the blade will fit tightly without any tension on the screw at all. Uh, one great example of this would be the Spyderco Gale Bradley. You know, because... Uh, as, as we look sort of down the tail of the knife, <clears throat> because the standoff pillars are so precisely machined and the liners are ground for flatness and they're all perfectly parallel because of flatness and the, the height of the standoffs, there's really not much you're going to do with adjustment in that pivot. When you put that knife together, it's almost perfect before you ever tighten the pivot screw. You get a nice smooth deployment uh, with very little blade play, and you're, you're essentially just fine-tuning with that pivot screw. <clears throat> 
And, you know, uh, several years ago, a knife designer and maker named Chris Reeve, Chris Reeve Knives, uh, re released a knife called the Sebenza. Some of you might have heard of it. Uh, and it's got a little different system. Let's look at that. Now, instead of just having a pivot screw, a blade, and washers, we've got these large slabs on either side of the pivot, which essentially, when you look at it in one piece, instead of this cross section, it's a big bushing. The pivot actually <clears throat> is precisely slip fit into this bushing, and the height of the bushing, the dimension from here to here, is precisely, precisely fitted to the width of the blade and the thickness of these two washers. So what you have, and if you look over to this area of the diagram, <clears throat> you can see that this joint between bushing and frame is drawn completely tight. So when you tighten that pivot screw, there's nowhere to go. That is a precise dimension that can't be adjusted. The blade then is a reduced thickness and then the washers take up that space with a precisely machined bearing clearance. So every Sebenza 21 and back is going to be precisely fit, tightly assembled from the factory so the blade swings with specified tension. Now if you sort of hunt around YouTube a little bit, you can find videos of guys tweaking that tension or tweaking that freedom in the blade. And the way they do this is by disassembling the knife, taking these washers out, and very finely sanding or polishing them to relieve some of the blade tension and give the blade the desired freeness in swing that they want. Now, I think uh, Chris Reeve Knives would probably tell you that's not a good idea and you should just use the knife and eventually those washers will wear in and the, the blade will get a little freer and smoother as it goes. The neat thing about this design is that the tolerances are so precise and not only in the pivot, also in the standoffs or the pillars that are back here in the area of the blade you can't see, the Frame slabs of titanium are precisely machined and ground for flatness. And when you put that knife together, you just tighten all the fasteners down completely tight, and it's perfect. Uh, you know, that's why they cost $400. <clears throat> Another interesting aspect of this design, if you notice, the hole in the blade goes from here all the way to here. So it's a pretty broad span. <clears throat> what that does is it takes advantage of these slip fits between blade and bushing and bushing and pivot. <clears throat> Those are so precise the blade can't really move in this direction hardly at all. And that is a function especially on a frame lock or liner lock like the Sebenza would be. When that lock engages against the tang of the blade back here, it's pushing in this direction, which also, because of perpendicularity, makes uh, the blade more rigid in side-to-side -side play. Again, super tight tolerances. Uh, Chris Reeve knives are machined to general tolerances of three ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, you know, back in my old toolmaker days, those were gauging tolerances. Those were tolerances that you machined parts to uh, for fixtures that were used to measure other parts. We're talking super, super small. Uh, everything's straight, flat, true, and machined to very high tolerances. So the blade swings freely without play. And this bushing pivot uh, 
is something fairly unique to Chris Reeve knives. Uh, sadly, he has gone away with it and has uh, gone away from it in his latest Sabenza. But the reason that they're so famous is largely because of the machining quality and because of this pivot design. <clears throat> now here in the last couple of years, there's been a new sort of bushing pivot, and that comes in some Spyderco knives. And I'm sorry guys, I kind of screwed up this drawing. What we have here is a design similar to the Chris Reeve. You've got a pivot screw here, a pivot screw here, and then a shouldered pin that actually comes through the frame and then this shoulder captivates this washer so what we have are a tight surface here a tight surface here and then if you see this gap I kinda drew arrows up here so you can tell what I'm talking about <clears throat> we're drawn tight here we're drawn tight here we have a little gap here. If you notice the difference is the washers in the spider co bushing pivot are trapped between this shouldered pin and the frame. Now if this knife is perfect, it'll act much like a Sabenza when it's fully tightened. However, there's a bit of a difference. You can't tweak that gap by sanding or polishing washers. The relationship that matters in this knife is the height of this shouldered pin from here down to here in relationship to the thickness of the blade. Uh, if you make the washers thicker or thinner, that blade freeness isn't going to change. What does change if you have washers that are too thick or too thin is parallelism between the sides of the knife, which can cause binding as it goes around. Um, now, having said that, if you have a, a bushing pivot or shouldered pin pivot Spyderco that is too loose, there is a way to tighten it up a little bit and what you're going to do in that case is you're going to crank down these pivot screws essentially crushing the washer bringing these bearing surfaces closer together uh, now there is a little bit of caution if you're going to do that and what happens if you crush these washers too much I'm going to go down to one without all the markings if you crush this washer here too much it will, that material's got to go somewhere. So you can develop a bit of a raised edge or a burr here, uh, which quickly puts your knife into a bind, and then you're tight against the blade in here with, it, with very little support out here, and that ends up not being such a good situation. So <clears throat> these Spyderco knives, you know, they are a mass production knife. And we're not talking about the tolerances that Chris Reeve has. There's really no way to, there'd be no way to really precisely grind this shoulder. You know, this is cut with a tool. It's not, it's not finished ground to those three ten thousandths tolerances like the Chris Reeve knife is. Uh, they can be very good. They can be a little frustrating. Uh, I have a paramilitary too that is perfect, but it took a little work to get there. And <clears throat> you know that's a hundred and twenty dollar knife, not a four hundred dollar knife. I I don't know if my uh, bad diagrams help, but for you guys who wonder what all these different pivot constructions are, and you know when we talk about bushing pivots and adjusting pivot screws to remove play, uh, these are the areas of the knife that we're really talking about. Well, I hope that helps. Hope I didn't bore you to sleep. Grace and peace, guys. Talk to you soon.